There we go. Um, I, I'm, I'm really excited because this is actually, actually you like my picture? Oh, I haven't started yet. I'm really excited because this is my second time I've, I've been with y'all for D now. I was here last spring and I was actually playing bass up here with the band. So I'm, I'm really excited about, about, about being here. Um, and, and I just want God to speak to us and, and, and I want to take you to this journey. Um, and and y'all talked about being called serve in your small groups earlier, okay? And so we're going to kind of continue on that on that way. But the first thing I want, I want y'all to look at the screen really quick. And how many, raise your hand if that's ever happened to you where you don't know what, okay. I'm not the only one. I mean, I, I, I go to the gym, uh, believe it or not. I may not look like I go to the gym because I like to eat, but I do go to the gym almost every day. Okay, like to eat too, we're awesome. All right, so anyway, there's, there's these... There's these two old men, okay, that, that are always there. And I know that one guy always, he always, you know, fist bumps. And I know the other guy, he likes to give a good firm handshake. And I always forget which old man it is. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? And I don't know what to do with my hand. I'm like, should I? So I kind of wait for him to kind of do this or this, you know, and then I, okay, I'm like, okay. But anyway, that right there, it's called a plump, okay? And that is just really, yeah, it has a name. Look at a plump, okay? Google it, okay? It does. Anyway, it's really, really awkward. And, and, and I, I know I've been in many awkward situations, but I'll share with you my most awkward situation was, uh, a lot of my stories, I, 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 you know, I love football. I played football for a long time. I haven't played in college. And um, so this, this story comes when I was a sophomore in high school, okay? My, my school, was a, it was a pretty big school. And I made a varsity team. Okay, I was a tackle. I made the varsity team, but and I was a backup. I knew I wasn't going to play the whole game. So since I wasn't going to play the whole game because the seniors were going to start, they said, "Okay, you, JT, you're going to be you're going to be on the kickoff team." And I was like, "Yes, I'm on the kickoff team." You know, so it's my first game as a sophomore. I couldn't even drive yet, and I was already playing, already playing varsity for for a, a, a big time high school. You know, and my head is just big because there's only two sophomores on that team. It was me and, and another guy, the quarterback that was there on the you know. We're the only sophomores on the team. There's the rest of the junior seniors, older guys. So anyway, we're on the kickoff team. Okay, my first game ever. We had practice and everything. And I knew what I was supposed to do. And, and we kick the ball up. Okay, and there it goes. Now I'm running down the field. <sighs> Huffing and puffing, you know, and getting down there as fast as possible. And I see the guy. He's kind of running towards me. And, 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 I, and as I get closer, I'm like, man, this guy looks bigger than what I thought when I first saw him. And I'm running and, and I make a tackle. And, and my, my helmet goes right as me, and I remember I got hit so hard, boom. But I, I, and I remember kind of just my world just kind of crashed a little bit. And I was like, oh, wow. But then my, my, my energy level, I was like, wow, I just made the tackle. So I get up right away, and, and I'm battling, I'm like, I'm energized. Yes. But then, man, my hands are hurting a little bit. This guy hit me really hard. He was big. And so I don't know what to do. So I'm, I'm celebrating. You know, I made the tackle. I'm a sophomore in March. This is awesome. And so I, I, you know, I'm celebrating. And I run the sideline. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm going to go get some bottled water, you know, or the, the water that squirts, you know, out in the, in the bottles. And so I do that. And as, as I'm taking some, I look around. And, and my jersey was, was black. And I look around. I see nothing but, but red jerseys. And I have a squirt bottle in my hand, squirting, and I'm like, this is really awkward. I'm on the wrong sideline. <laughs> like, I am totally on the wrong sideline, but you know, I don't want to be that awkward, so I want to kind of act like I know what I'm doing. And so I squirt, and I'm still drinking, and I'm like, man, how do I get out of this mess? These guys are juniors and seniors, and I'm only a sophomore, and my head just got rocked on this tackle. So I kind of, so then they finally kind of tell me, like, dude, what are you doing? And, and anyway, so I'm kind of scooting out, but by that time, there was a play going on already. And I'm scooting out to the side, to the side, to the side, to the side, and still awkward. And I'm, I'm thinking, what do people in the stands think? Do they see a black jersey among all these red jerseys? And what's going on? So I'm scooting down, scooting down. And finally, like, they, they already had one offensive play, uh, and our team was on defense. So I kind of run on the field, act like I'm part of the huddle, and I kind of run to, to my sideline. And one friend noticed, not that the coaches noticed, it was crazy. One friend noticed, and he's like, dude, where, where do you go over there? And I was like, yeah, don't tell anybody. Just, just don't, don't tell anybody. And that, that was one of my most awkward awkward moments ever. You would think that when I started going to the red sideline, somebody would say, your sideline's over there. You know, you would have thought that, but I guess I was in my own world. I probably couldn't hear anything. Probably. Something was going on. And I already had some water and I was squirting water in my face. 
as I went to the wrong to the sideline. So that was very, very awkward. But anyway, um, today we're going to talk about a story where, believe it or not, Jesus, Jesus had an awkward moment. So I want you to keep that in mind. But before we dive into the Word, um, I got a little video of one of my favorite, favorite awkward people. Okay? One of my favorite. Just watch. This movie pulling out of my and, and I just I just laugh every time I, I watch the end. Then he's my favorite part because he he's still dancing in the music and he stops. But I don't know why, but he runs like he just runs everywhere. Like whenever he just finds himself in an awkward situation, he just takes off running. And so I, I just find that part very very hilarious. But anyway, all right, um, can we get our Bibles out, please? So Luke four, Luke four. Okay, you should. 
You good? Okay, Luke, Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. Say, yo, you found it. Yo. All right, find verse 14. Say, yo, you found verse 14. Yo. All right, so it says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and news about him spread throughout the surrounding district. And he began teaching in their synagogues and was praised by all. Don't close your Bible. Keep your finger there. Jesus at this time, Jesus at this time had just come off the mountain, okay, where he was tempted. He was tempted, okay, and he resisted temptation. And he came down full of the Holy Spirit. As soon as he came down from the mountain, he was preaching everywhere and people were liking it. And he was starting, he was starting to get rock star status. And people were saying, man, I like the way that guy preaches. He has some good words, okay? So this is what's going on with Jesus. Now let's go to verse 16. And he came to Nazareth. Everybody say Nazareth. Nazareth. Everybody say Nazareth. Nazareth. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as it was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up and read. And the book, verse 17, and the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And he opened the book and found the place where it was written. Verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and he sent me to proclaim the release to the captives and recover his sight to the blind and to set free those who are oppressed to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord verse 20 and he closed the book gave it back to the attendant sat down and the eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him verse 21 and he began to say to them today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. 22. And all were speaking well of him. I'm going to start again. Verse 22. And all were speaking well of him. And wondering at the gracious words which were falling from his lips. And they were saying, is this not Joseph's son? Keep your finger there. So, story. Keep your finger there. Look. Jesus walked into the synagogue in Nazareth. Everybody say Nazareth. Nazareth. And they, it was custom. So he was, he was getting rock, rock star status, right? His teaching, okay? And so they said, hey, there's Jesus. He's a good teacher right there. So they said, hey, brother, uh, you preach today. It's your turn. So they gave him the scroll of Isaiah to read, and he read it, Okay? And when he read was a part, he's, it's a really good part. And, and all it says the, in that part is that, hey, those who are captives, guess what? If, if you're captive, you're going to be free today. Those who are poor, guess what? There's hope for you today. There is. If, if, you're, if you're battling something, if you're going through something bad, guess what? It's only for a little time. There is hope coming today. And then not only did Jesus read that part, but Jesus also said, you know what? And it's through me. Okay. Through me, that is going to be fulfilled today. And everybody in the synagogue, okay? By the way, if you don't, if you don't know what a synagogue is, it's pretty much the, the Jewish kind of like a church. They would gather around just like this. Jesus would have kind of been right here. The only difference is Jesus would have been in the middle. The people would have been on the side, okay, while he's reading. And everybody in the synagogue said, man, I like what I'm hearing. I love what I'm hearing. They're saying, that guy can preach. The eyes, the eyes of everyone were on him. And they said, those words are amazing. They're awesome. And they were gracious. Everybody say gracious. gracious. Coming from his lips. Could you imagine? Just, just imagine that. Imagine if Jesus was to come right now, okay, and just start preaching. How many of y'all would actually pay attention if Jesus was standing here and start preaching? I would. Yeah, that's right. I would too. Put your hand down. How many of y'all think that the, the, the talk that Jesus would do would be amazing? All right. Put your hand down. That was what was going on that day. He preached in the synagogue and everybody was like, wow, that is awesome. Now, that's good. Now here's for the awkward situation. 
Isn't there, when your song's going good, doesn't there always have to be something awkward that has to happen? Yes. Something weird. I mean, just like last week in the Super Bowl, I mean, come on, the power went out. The biggest sport event ever. 100 million people saw power outage. All right, anyway, fail, that's right. Let's keep reading. So, make sure you don't leave four again. I told you to keep your finger there. It's going to get really awkward. It might get a little confusing about what, what, what I'm going to read and what you're going to read, okay? But stay with me. Enter into the story with me. All right. Verse 23. Remember we left off where everybody was saying that Jesus was awesome, awesome, preaching awesome. Okay, verse 23. And he said to them, no doubt you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Whatever you heard was done at Capernaum. Do here in your hometown as well. Verse 24, and he said, truly I say to you, no prophet is welcome in his hometown. Verse 25, but I say to you in truth, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the sky was shut up for three years and six months when a great famine came over all the land. 26, and yet Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. Verse 27, and there were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elijah, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman, the Syrian. Now here's the awkward part. Verse 28, and all the people in the synagogue were filled with rage. Everybody say rage. Rage. As they heard, as they heard these things. And they got up and drove him out of the city and led him to the brow of, of a hill on which their city had been built in order to throw him down off the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went his way. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I, 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 just, I just got through talking about how Jesus stepped into the synagogue, he had a scroll, and he read the book of Isaiah, and he said, hey, there's hope for you, and there's hope for you, okay? The, the poor get ready, because there's hope. There's hope coming. If you're captive to something, you're going to be free. There's hope coming, and everybody's like, yeah, preach it, amen, yeah, Jesus, Jesus rocks. You know, all the teachers, that where are they? They were probably saying that back then, you know, at that time. But, but anyway, so, so, and then at, at, at the end of what I just read right now, at the end of what I just read, I just told you that everybody in the synagogue was now filled with what? Rage. With what? Rage. Rage. And they wanted to throw him off. And they wanted to throw him off the cliff. Well, let me tell you what's going on. I, I read a lot about what Jesus said, and, and I'm just going to kind of paraphrase a little bit for you. What Jesus did is he said, you remember, hey guys, in here, there's hope for you. There, there is. But then he said, then this is what Jesus did. Here's the awkward moment. Okay? Here's the awkward moment. Then Jesus said, I, I want you to remember, everybody in here, I want you to remember something. Okay? Remember, we're in the synagogue and Jesus is preaching. He said, remember uh, back then, um, God didn't only heal the people, our people, our Jewish people, but he also healed the people um, from a different kind of ethnicity. Oh, yeah. And, and remember that when the prophet in the Old Testament needed help, sometimes God's people, the Jewish people that came, they came from the Israelites and all that, sometimes they didn't want to help God's prophet, but the, the people on the outside helped them as well. And you know what Jesus is saying? Jesus is saying, he's, you know what he's saying is, he's like, the people out there, not only the people in here, but guess what? Not only the people in here, but the people out there, they're going to have hope as well. They're going to have hope. And not only is God for the people in this synagogue, but God is also, God is also for the people out there. Think about that for a moment. All the people in the synagogue, all the Jewish people were like, you know what? Jesus rocks. He preached an awesome sermon. I have hope one day. 
One day we'll be free. The, the Jewish people at that time, they, they were struggling because the Roman government would treat them really, really bad. Okay? They would just treat them really, really bad. Okay? And they, they wanted freedom from the Roman government. And when they heard Jesus say, we're going to have hope one day, that's awesome. And their hearts turned immediately when they heard Jesus say, when they heard Jesus say that people on the outside, people who were not Jewish, were also going to have hope. And not only they were going to have hope, but God was also going to bless them. Everybody say bless them. Look, uh, my next little picture, that is the... Um, that is the Mount, man, I should have written the name down, but in, in Israel, okay, that the tradition of where Jesus was going to be thrown off is right there, that little, that little hill right there, that little cliff. Um, Jesus had an awkward moment. In one minute, maybe not a minute, maybe a little more, it doesn't really say, but in, 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 in one scene, the hearts of the people were for Jesus. And the next minute they turned and they were against Jesus. And they took him up to this hill right here, okay? And they were about to push him over. Um, I'm going to read, uh, go back to verse, uh, let me see what else. Verse 30. Luke 4, 30. So, guess what? There's a miracle that happens right here. A miracle that happens in verse 30. As soon as these mean people from the synagogue were about to push Jesus over, a miracle happened on verse 30. And it says, but passing through their midst, he went away. How crazy is that? Could you imagine that? If it was like a movie, I wonder if like the, the, the mean Jewish people in the synagogue, they're ready to push Jesus over and the miracle happened. I wonder if they just froze like this, maybe awkwardly. And I wonder if Jesus just like, like walked by them and continued to do ministry. Or, or I wonder if Jesus did this. Like I wonder if it was like, like Jesus juke. Juki or something like that. When Jesus was like, oh, you want to throw me off? Ooh, watch that. Oh, Juki there. And, you know, just kind of went by these people. It's kind of like, kind of like how, how John Rizal did to the singers. But, but anyway, um, I wonder, is that too, too soon? Okay, sorry. Sorry about that. I wonder if, uh, sorry, Grant. Uh, forget. Um, anyway, I, I wonder if Jesus juked them or what he did. But anyway, anyway, there's a miracle that happened. Could you imagine that? One man, Jesus. A mob of angry, angry church synagogue goers. Okay, synagogue goers. They're about ready to push them over. A miracle happened where Jesus just walked through their midst. And he was able to do ministry. Let's look at the screen. Why did those in the synagogue want to kill Jesus? The Jewish people believed that God was on their side only. Only. You know, sometimes, sometimes in church, we as a group here, oh, here's a question. Is God on our side? Yes. Is God on our side? Yes. One more time. Is God on our side? Yes. All right. Now, here, here's the crazy thing, too, is that the people that are outside these walls, okay, the people that are outside the state of Oklahoma, the people that are outside America, Guess what? God is for them as well. God is for them as well. And the Jewish people, they got angry. They got angry. <laughs> they got angry when they heard that other people, God was for them as well. The Jewish people did not like any, any other ethnicity outside their home. In fact, they had a name. They had a name for people who were not Jewish. Can somebody just help me out with that? Yeah. <laughs> Close, not scum. 
Gentile. Everybody say Gentile. 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 Say Gentile. Gentile. There. So they had a name for those outside of their ethnicity. Okay? How arrogant is that? The Jewish people believed that they were the only ones who deserved God's blessings. Now here's the thing. Here's the thing. Does God bless y'all? Say yes. Raise your hand and say yes. Raise your hand and say no. So some of you may say, you know what? Uh, some of y'all may say, Mr. Mr. Preacher Talker Man, I, I don't really feel like God blesses me because I see uh, sometimes, you know, my family struggles with money. Sometimes my, my, my parents fly. Sometimes I, I don't feel like, like God blesses me. But, but I'm going to tell you right now, you being in here is a blessing in itself. Okay? You, you being here, you being alive is a blessing. Okay? You are being blessed as you are here today, tonight, right here, right now. So you are being blessed. And here's the thing. The Jewish people, they forgot the reason why they were being blessed. Everybody open your Bibles, please, to Genesis. Genesis 12. God was on their side and why God was blessing them. 
Because the Jewish people were to be blessed by God so that they can be a blessing to others who are not part of the Jewish tradition. Could you imagine that? Just, 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 just imagine, comprehend what I just said. The Jewish people had forgotten that the reason God was for them and the reason God blessed them was so that they would go and bless others. They had forgotten that so much, so much, that when Jesus said, I'm going to bless other people who are not Jewish, they had forgotten so much, grieved so much, that their hearts turned to rage. Could you imagine that? How awkward was that moment? Totally awkward. It's like an awkward silence. So here's 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 the my question. Here here's the challenge. Uh, as we have some some music um, that's going to be played, you can close your Bibles there for a moment. I want you to I want you to stay be still. Okay? Don't talk to your neighbors. Don't try not to move your hands so much. Try not to move your feet so much. I, I just want you to listen. Okay? It's the biggest thing right now. You just got done. You just got done in your small groups talking about Jesus telling people to go and serve those who are in need. But the honest truth is that we are sometimes selfish. Think about it. Sometimes we are selfish. Sometimes we don't want to share what we have, okay, whether it's physically or, or, or materialistically, whatever we have, with other people, especially those who are needed, and especially those who are not like us. The Jewish people in that synagogue, their hearts were turned to rage. Turned to rage when they knew God was giving them hope and God was going to bless them also. So the challenge is when you hear the words call to serve, does your heart turn to rage? Did you feel like, you know what, I call to serve people? Maybe people that I don't know. Maybe people that don't even know who God is. Maybe people that have a different religion. Maybe people who are, are poor. Maybe people who just, who just hate in general. They hate other people. Jesus wants me to go and serve those people? Are you kidding me? Does your heart feel like that sometimes? Yeah, I mean, does your heart feel like, no, there's no need. In fact, the, the people who are in need, the, those, those people who may be poor sometimes, you know, they probably put themselves in that situation. You know what I'm saying? So they, I'm not going to go out there. Is your heart like that? You already know Jesus has called us to go, sir. What is your heart like? What is your heart like when it comes to that? And here's the big thing. Um, many times we just don't want to put ourselves in that, in that awkward situation. But I'm going to tell you this right now. Last thing you're going to hear is that Jesus put himself in an awkward situation to remind everybody in the synagogue God is giving hope to those out there as well. And you know what? People in the synagogue, you are actually the ones that are supposed to be the blessing to those out there. You are the ones to go and give the hope to those out there. Jesus put himself
himself in that awkward situation, so awkward that it almost killed him. Almost killed him. But there's a miracle at the end. You're called to serve. You are. Is it awkward sometimes? Yeah. But Jesus put himself in an awkward situation. May it be bad sometimes. It might, might be bad. Yeah. And Jesus almost died. You are called to serve others. Let's go to stand and worship.